I'd just like to start by asking you some questions just about um, what your daily life looks like for um, this time over quarantine um, and the coronavirus. Uh, it's pretty quiet, you know, um, down here in Edmonds. My normal routine was pretty active for um, my retirement life before the virus. Um, I used to go to Harbor Square Athletic Club every day doing water aerobics and yoga, and uh, I don't do that now. Um, so it's quiet. I do a lot more reading, um, gardening when I'm in the mood, a little bit of walking. And Before school started, it was pretty um, easygoing. I had a list for myself just to keep myself going because it's it's really tempting to just fall back into the trap of you know, not doing anything um, and watching TV and sleeping. But, you know, now like I'm in school and so I have this um, even more structured routine where I wake up in the morning and I read to my grandma and then um, I have school and maybe some clubs in between. And then um, I talk to my friends on the phone maybe a little bit. And then uh, pretty much after that, um, I just uh, do homework and then hit the hay. <laughs> That's good. I want you to say more about the conversation in the morning with your grandma, since I'm a grandma too. So I, I love that story that you told earlier to me. So tell, tell us more about it. We usually just kind of start out by uh, catching up. And she, she tells me about her, uh, my cousins that live down in Buckley where they live. Um, after that we usually just kind of um, read a book maybe sometimes we read like classics. Um, we wor worked our way through um, the Shakespeare books, a few of them mainly comedies and then we also um, now we're working on uh, the Sorcerer's Stone for um, uh, Harry Potter and that's really fun. And you, um, you said that you had uh, grandchildren and then they were having a lot of different things going on, right? I do, I do, I do. And uh, we just, um, they, uh, up until a couple months ago, all the grandchildren were in other states. But um, in the fall, um, our California grandson moved up here to go to the UW and went into the dorms. My husband, Bruce, and I are a little nervous about going particularly down to the university district where there's a lot of um, cases of COVID more than up here in Edmonds. So we saw him outdoors and then we haven't seen him until last weekend. That was good, but it's, it's sad for us because we really were looking forward, you know, to really establish a relationship, um, you know, with him in the same town and being his support people, but he's doing fine. And our, granddaughter is in Baltimore. She just moved to Baltimore to be in a fellowship um, program for two years with NIH. My daughter teaches third grade, um, all, you know, all distance learning. And it's really, it's really tough for her. Um, so it's a challenge for everybody. Edmonds, um, our little town of Edmonds is surprisingly kind of lively though. I'm, you know, I don't know whether you come into town at all, but this weekend they started the holiday market. And of course we had the summer market. And, um, but that's surprising. Things are opening up, new places or new restaurants. I think, wow, this is so interesting that this can happen. I went to Edmonds um, the other week and it was, it was great. You know, there were people walking around. They were just kind of you know, it seemed normal. It really did. Like we're, we, it seemed like we kind of came back to a little bit of reality. The future is sort of unknown, isn't it? How do you, how do you feel about that, Maxine? I used to kind of have a plan for myself. I'm kind of nowhere near that now because there's just been so much change with my, my schedule and my daily life that it's, you know, like it gives you some time to really reflect on what's important to you. But at the same time, you, you don't have enough experience with all these things. So it's kind of like this tug of war. I'm kind of having to deal with deciding what I would like outside of just, you know, the simple, easy, like I'm going to log onto my computer and learn. And, you know, it's just, it's so hard to tell what I enjoy sometimes. My granddaughter's um, 
in Baltimore, her, her, if her um, fellowship is not, is a working with, with clients and patients um, who are addicted. And so of course they can't work with any patients right now. So she's doing lab work, which is not what she wanted to do, but eventually, you know, maybe things will open up and change. I remember last year at this time, I was, I, I flew to Reno to see my older sister who's in a nursing home and my, my daughter from California drove up and we met and we stayed in a hotel. We had a great time visiting. We're planning to spend a couple months in the winter in Santa Barbara. We've done this for four years and I, we're going to go forward and do it, but I think we're going to be sort of self-quarantining when we get there and yeah. we have friends and family there and I think we'll just have to play it by ear once we get there so well what about Thanksgiving for you and your family what do you have plans for Thanksgiving um it seems like we're going to be going to my aunt's house and having kind of um like a Thanksgiving there but it's just going to be so much different than anything we've you know had before well, hopefully we'll have some uh zoom or facetime uh meetings with the with the family and we can do so much more than, you know, is say this, if this happened in like 1950s or something, like maybe, you know, they couldn't talk to their grandparents or their, you know, they were away from home and it, you know, I feel like it would just have been so much more like scary, just not being able to connect with people because that's just so important. My grandma, who is uh, she, the other one who is in the community and volunteering and, um, you know, interacting with so many different people. And she's, uh, you know, 10 years younger, but still like she, you know, these, she's not young. And so, you know, I worry about her and I just wonder like, what is she thinking? One of your grandmothers probably has a greater tolerance for risk or, yeah. or a need to socialize. Mm -hmm. That too. Yeah, for sure. But I mean, and then a lot of people don't know anybody who has had COVID. So mm -hmm. there's that reality there. I uh, do, but. Do I do too? I know somebody yeah. too. So. It doesn't feel real sometimes because, you know, you just heard from this other person that this person that you knew had it. And it's, it just feels really detached sometimes. I kind of miss going to our local library and thinking about that the other day, you know. So lots of things that are like, gradually opening up some people are but are participating but like your grandparents who don't leave the house ever that one time they left their house they got rear-ended and they had to deal with this whole mess <laughs> i was like what are the chances like the one time they leave their house in like s over six months and this one time they get um, rear-ended in the, um, in the parking lot. It's just, you know. Well, don't they go to the doctor? I mean, don't they have to do certain things? I think my grandma had maybe like an eye surgery, but other than that, it's like, you know, they really don't want to expose themselves and I totally get it, but. They're content with each other too, huh? Mm -hmm. Your yeah. grandparents, yeah. Yeah, well, they always say they have they have their separate rooms in their house <laughs> and they keep their separate ends of the house and that's how they work. My husband and I have had to reset a couple of times, but most of the time we do have a, a large house with two floors. So he's upstairs with the door closed with the dogs to keep everybody quiet right now. But you know, we and he takes walks at different times. But I wanted to go back to reading because I didn't tell you that my husband and I read together. So that's been a really nice thing that we've done for 25, 30 years. So we're always reading novels together. And right now we're in a detective series. So, but, and we all, we're big readers anyway, separately, but we do that. So I think it's lovely to read to people or have people read to you, you know, I really, I really like it. Yeah, lot. I feel like it just gives you such a connection to people and like, yeah, right. especially with COVID going on and where everyone is just so far apart. And like, sometimes that's the only thing you can do is just read to someone from like a long distance or even in your home. And so it's like, it's something that like kind of brings you back into maybe makes you forget a little bit that like the craziness that's happening out there. and. Yeah. Yeah, the story.